Mark your own. Uh, I didn't type this quiz up. A colleague of mine did from a different high school, but I thought it was a nice kind of a, hey, let's figure out some of the basics here. So it says, uh, sketch the basic graph and sketch the translated graph. Label at least two points on the final translated graph. By label, I mean clearly put dots there. If you actually label them with numbers, that's fine too. Um, this is the square root graph. I can figure this out in my head, I think, because I know the square root of 0 is 0. Except let's actually make that go through 0, 0 just a little bit more. I know the square root of 0 is 0. I know the square root of 1 is 1. I know, oh, 4. Square root of 4 is 2. And I know the square root of 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, is 3. I think the original would look something like that. One mark. And then the transformed graph. How has this graph been moved? Let's see. It looks like they've replaced the x with an x minus 2. It looks like they've replaced the x with an x minus 2. And I know that means to right. And that plus 5 there, that means 5 up. It means they replaced the y with a y minus 5. But the minus 5 was on this side, Amanda. And then they plus the 5 over to that side. <laughs> this graph is going to get moved. <coughs> two right and five up. Now, there's a bit of a glitch on the graph paper because that five right there, it's tough to tell whether it goes with that or with that. If you use that number as your five, give yourself full marks. But as I was saying to a student this morning, believe it or not, doing graph paper in Word is really a pain. It's surprisingly <laughs> difficult, especially getting the numbers to line up. So I'm just gonna count Starting right here, I'll change colors. One, two, or two, two right, and then one, two, three, four, five up. The first point would end up right there. The next point, two right, one, two, one, two, three, four, five up. This point here, two right, one, two, three, four, five up. And this point here, two right off my graph. One, two, you know what? It's going to be kind of about there. It's off my graph. On your test, if you go off the graph by one point, that might happen in one of my questions. Probably not, but it might. If you're going off the graph by like eight, you've made a mistake. And really, if you're going off the graph even by one, double check your work. I tried to make them so they would all fit on the graph on the test. I'm less fussy on the quiz. Also, I just wanted you to realize sometimes in real life they do go off the graph and you need more graph paper. But on your test, I tried to keep everything nice and condensed. I think it's going to look like that. How would I mark that? Those three points right there, half mark off for each point that's incorrect. So if you got two points wrong, sorry, you can get zero out of one. One mark for this graph, one mark for that graph, and that's how you get your score out of two. Number two, f of x equals, um, oh, I know what this is. This is a semicircle with a center at 0, 0 and a radius of 3. This is a semicircle that's centered right there, and it goes 3 left, 1, 2, 3 up, 3 right. One mark. How has this graph been moved? Hmm. Looks like they've replaced the x with what? So if they've replaced the x with an x plus 2, I think that's 2 left. And, oh, what's this plus 4 over here mean? Four up. In fact, they replaced the y with the y minus four, and then they plus the four over to this side. Now, for the semicircle, I said the easiest way to graph this is to move the center and then graph the radius. You could have moved all three points, by the way. 
works just fine. But I'm going to be clever. I'm going to actually say my center is two left, one, two, three, four up. There's my new center, and the radius is three, the radius is three, the radius is three. It would look like that. I'll double check if I go two left, four up. Yep, it works. Two left, four up. Yep, it works. Two left, four up. Yep, it works. Once again, one mark for the original blue graph. And then for the transformation, if you got it right, full marks. Otherwise, a half mark off for each point that's wrong. So if you get two wrong points, sorry, you get zero out of one. Two marks grand total. Turn the page. Number three. Oh, that's the uh, absolute value. Gra I remember what that looks like. I remember what that looks like. This first one is going to go through 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 2, 2, negative 2, 2, 3, 3. It's that V shape because it's the absolute value graph. You don't have to go that far. In fact, if you want to just go that far and put arrows on the end, I'm good with that. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. Mark. Shannon, joy of my heart. What does this symbol mean? I went on a big rant about it. I told you how much I hated it. What transformation was that one? What was that the symbol for? Louder, you're right. Inverse. Ah, this is inverse. How do I find an inverse? Switch the X and the Y. I'm just going to go like this to remind myself. That's, that's my abbreviation for switch the X and the Y. Come up with your own. So I'll switch the X and the Y here. 0, 0 is going to, oh, 0, 0, Holly is going to become 0, 0. What was the fancy word for a point that didn't move? Invariant. And 1, 1 is going to stay 1, 1. And believe it or not, 2, 2 is going to stay 2, 2. 3, 3 is going to stay 3, 3. Here, negative 1, positive 1 is going to become positive 1, negative 1. Ah, I can kind of see what's going on now, Katie. Uh, here, negative 2, positive 2 is going to become positive 2, negative 2. In fact, I think the red graph is the inverse. One mark each, and again, a half mark off for each point you got wrong. Now, this graph paper is a bit weird. It's not perfectly square. You'll notice each grid, each grid, it's a rectangle, not a square. And so it's kind of distorting things. But I think if you do draw the line y equals x, which goes through 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, 7, 7, I think it is a reflection. That was the test. That was our built-in error check that we did. I'll give you square graph paper on your test. I just, just I didn't feel like mus mucking around with the graphics on this thing. Also, when you get your graphing calculators, your graphing calculators have screens that are rectangular, not square, and so they're going to distort your graphs as well. We'll learn to interpret that. Example four. Uh, three graphs, three marks. How about one mark for each graph? Uh, it says, make sure to clearly label each graph. In other words, make sure that if I was marking this, I could tell which one was which. I'll go colors. I'll do this first one in blue. Now, as soon as you see a negative, that's a reflection. Question is, is it a vertical reflection or a horizontal reflection? If it was a horizontal reflection, where would the negative be? Right next to the X. You know what? It's a vertical reflection. It's a vertical reflection. Now, careful. It is a reflection about the X axis because when you spin things vertically, you are spinning them about the X axis. So if they ever say, reflect about the X axis, that's vertical, even though the letter X is there. Everything's backwards. Uh, so I'm going to look at my heights. How high is this right here? Zero high. What's the reflection of zero high? Still zero high. Hey, that guy's going to be invariant. But instead of positive one high, it's going to be negative one high. And instead of positive four high, it's going to be negative four high. And I'll connect them. 
and instead of positive 4 high, it's going to be negative 4 high, and I'll connect them. And instead of positive 3, it's going to be negative 3 high, and I'll connect them. And instead of 0 high, oh, it's still going to be 0 high, but instead of negative 3 high, it's going to be positive 3 high, and I'll connect them. That right there is y equals negative f of x. One mark. Looks like a little fish, Mr. Duke. Shut up. I'll do this one in red. Now here there is also a negative, but Amanda, it's with the x. It's a horizontal reflection. So now instead of me thinking how high, I'm going to think to myself, self, how far left, right. Negative 4 is going to become positive 4. Negative 3, still 1 high, is going to become positive 3, still 1 high. Connect them. Negative 2, 4 high is going to become positive 2, 4 high. Connect them. Negative 1, 4 high is going to become positive 1, 4 high. Connect them. 0 left, right is going to, oh, invariant stays where it is, Reggie. Uh, positive 1 to the right, 0 high, is going to become negative 1 to the left, 0 high. And 2 right is going to become 2 left. I think that red graph is y equals f of negative x. One mark. And once again, half mark off for each point that's incorrect. If you get two wrong, sorry. The third one, green. Shannon, what's this a symbol for, x equals f of y? Also, and I like that one better, inverse, as a symbol, because the negative 1 looks too much like an exponent. But I'll be honest, on your test, I'm going to give you the negative 1 because that's by far the most standard symbol for inverse. Even though I hate it, I'll go with what the majority says. So, how do I find an inverse? Switch the x and y. Instead of negative 4, 0, 0, negative 4. Instead of negative 3, positive 1, positive 1, negative 3. Connect them. Instead of negative 2, 4, 4, uh, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 2, connect them. Instead of negative 1, positive 4, positive 4, negative 1, connect them. Instead of 0, 3, 3, 0, connect them. <coughs> Instead of 1, 0, 0, 1, connect them. And instead of 2, comma, negative 3, how about negative 3, comma, 2? I think this here is the inverse. It's a cluttered diagram, but you guys drew it, so you guys know what you drew. If you would be so kind as to give yourself a score out of 9 at the top of the page, please. So we looked last day at, I said, pause here for expansions, compressions. So we are going to pause here, except I don't want you to get out the photocopied lesson eight. I would like you to turn in your workbooks, please, to lesson eight. It's page 51. Page 51. No, you can hang on to it if you want two copies or recycle it. Page 51. Now, I gave you some questions to try on expansions and compressions, but I'm going to hold off on taking questions about the homework because since today's lesson is kind of a part two, I think maybe, maybe, maybe I might answer some of the questions about the homework as I do this anyhow. I hope. What did we say last day? We said, look, if you replace x with something times x, that will x horizontal always, it will stretch or shrink it, and it's backwards. If you replace, don't write this down, if you replace x with 2x, it's not going to be twice as fat. It's going to be half as fat. 
and the magic phrase for that Cassandra was horizontal compression by a half. By a factor of a half, if you really want to use the full magic. And we said if you replace y with, oh heck, a half y, replacing y with something is vertical. Replacing y with a half y won't make it half as high, though. It'll make it twice as high. Ah, the only problem, we would never write a one-half y. We would move the one-half over to the other side of the equal sign. And when you move a one-half from one side and you move it over to the other side of the equal sign, you know what it becomes on the other side of the equal sign? A two, not a one-half. And so, once again, the y stuff is not backwards if it's been moved over, like we've been saying all unit long. So in kind of a summary, they have this. We had the following note. A number there is the same as 1 over the number right there. If you have a generic function, replacing x with bx describes a horizontal stretch. It's an expansion or a compression. Okay. Oh, if b is a fraction, it's an expansion. If b is not a fraction, it's a compression. Replacing y, and I don't like the way they write this as 1 over a, 1 over a, so I find the way they phrase that confusing. Instead, I'm just going to jump straight to some examples to jog your memory. Let's look at example 1. So example 1 says this. Write the equation of the image of y equals x squared after a horizontal. You know what? Let's all underline the word horizontal because that tells me right away I'm replacing x with something. Horizontal compression about the y-axis by a factor of 3 quarters. Why do we call it a compression? Is 3 quarters bigger than 1 or smaller than 1? 3 quarters, bigger than 1 or smaller than 1? So smaller than, numbers smaller than 1, compressions, numbers bigger than 1, expansion. The real question is, what would I have replaced x with to get a compression of 3 quarters? My last class... I heard crickets chirping when I asked that question. Saw people a little bit of drool going down their chin. Andrew, right away, instantly leaps to the conclusion. He said, hey, Mr. Duick, I think it's this, because I've noticed, Mr. Duick, that when you're talking about the conversion, the, the compression factor or the expansion factor, all you're really doing is taking the reciprocal. I've noticed, Mr. Duick, don't write this down. For example, I've noticed that you replaced x with 2x. You said the compression factor was a half which is really taking a 2 and flipping it. I've noticed, Mr. Duick, when you said you replaced x with a half x, the expansion factor was 2, which is really just taking that coefficient and flipping it. Apparently, that's the pattern, and it is. What we're really saying is... What we're really saying is... Uh, da -da 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 -da, where do they have the... They don't have a 1 over b here. The expansion factor or the compression factor is 1 over whatever's in front of the x. And it's 1 over whatever's in front of the y, except almost always you've moved over what was in front of the y and taken the reciprocal as you divided it anyhow. Let's see. b. Oh, let's get the equation. This would look like this then. y equals, I'll replace the x with 4 thirds x. My original was x squared. My new one is something squared. The replacement squared. Although I have to admit, probably they would write this as follows. They would probably say, you know what? I know what 4 squared is. What is 4 squared? 16, you say? What is x squared? Just plain old x squared all over. What is 3 squared? I bet you they'd write it like that. 16x squared over 9. But I know that that's actually a horizontal compression by a factor of 3 quarters. B. Y equals the square root of x minus 3 after a horizontal compression by a factor of 4 and a vertical expansion by a factor of 2. Okay.
horizontal. Replace x with what? If I want an expansion by a factor of 4, I'm going to replace x with what? 1 quarter x. You could also write that as just x over 4. They do that sometimes too. And I see a vertical expansion, so I'm also going to replace y with, uh, if I want to vertically expand by a factor of 2, I'm going to replace y with what? So what's my equation going to look like? Let's rewrite it. Oh, I'm not going to write y. What am I going to write instead? What am I going to write instead? A half y equals. Then I see a square root. Oh, but I'm not going to write an x. What am I going to write instead? Hello. Wake up, boys and girls. And then the minus 3 would just drop down like a domino. Or, to be honest, they probably would get the y by itself. How would I get the y by itself? How could I move this 1 half over? Now, here's the tricky part. It would be times everything by 2, including this here, minus 3. It would look like this. You would get a 2 in front of the square root, but you would end up with a minus 6. And that's going to pose a problem that we're going to talk about later. C. Y equals 3x plus 7 after a vertical, oh, vertical y replaced with a vertical compression by a factor of one-third. If it was a vertical compression by a factor of one-third, what have I replaced y with? Three, I gotta be fussy, not three, 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 y. And... A reflection in the x-axis. A reflection means I'm sticking a negative somewhere. Think very carefully. Here's the x-axis. This is what we're reflecting in. Is that a vertical or a horizontal reflection if we're reflecting in the x-axis this way? I can do it all in one line. I'm actually replacing y with negative 3y. That would both give you a vertical compression by one-third and... A vertical reflection. So it would look like this. Instead of y, negative 3y equals 3x plus 7. Ah, but then they would almost certainly get the y by itself. They would almost certainly divide everything by negative 3, which would give you a positive y a negative x, because you'd have a 3 divided by a negative 3, which would just give you a plain old negative 1. And uh, minus 7 over 3. Kind of yucky, but Amanda, I can deal with it. It's not hideous fraction. It's okay fraction. Let's all turn the page, because we can. Okay. It says, describe how the graph of the second function compares to the graph of the first function. Okay. How does the second graph compare to the first graph? Well, let's see. First of all, let's ask what we've replaced with what. I think we've replaced x with what? Half x? Vertical or horizontal? Horizontal, expansion by 2 or compression by a half? Expansion by 2. Let's see if we can get these without writing the replacement. Let's see if we can just 
in our heads see the replacement. So I look at B, I look at B part two. What's the difference? What have we changed? Have we replaced Y with something or have we replaced X with something? X, what have we replaced X with? 3x, horizontal or vertical? Horizontal, expansion by 3 or compression by 1 third? Compression by a third. C, I see two things. Let's do the expansion compression part first. And then we'll do the, because a negative is a reflection, we'll do the reflection next. So first of all, that two, vertical or horizontal, and how do I know? Vertical, because otherwise it would be inside the absolute value next to the x. Is it next to the y where it belongs? Then it's not backwards. So vertical, what? Expansion by two. Check. I also see a negative. Is the negative vertical or horizontal? How do I know? If it was horizontal, where would it have to be? Next to the X. It's not next to the X inside. I, this it can't be horizontal. Nicole, what is this really? This is a vertical reflection. That's all I write. Now, Katie, the textbook will always add about the x-axis. The problem is that x there confuses me. When I see x-axis, I'm worried I might accidentally do a horizontal reflection even though it's vertical. So I only write vertical reflection when I'm doing these. If they force me to, I'll add the phrase about the x-axis, but only if they make me. D. Ah. Let's do the two first. Vertical or horizontal, and how do I know? Horizontal, expansion by two or compression by a half. Is it right next to the X? Then everything's backwards. Compression by a half. I see a negative. Nicole, that's a reflection, vertical or horizontal. How do I know? See the difference, right? Horizontal reflection. By the way, we know what this graph looks like. What did this graph look like, the absolute value graph? V-shaped. So Kirsten, all you would do is you would take each point, and instead of, for example, the point being 4 to the right, you would make it 2 to the right, and then you would horizontally reflect it. Now, because it's V-shaped, I think when you horizontally reflect it, you won't be able to tell because it's symmetrical. But you'd still do it. Or maybe you'd be clever and not bother because you know it would be the same answer. Ooh, that would be good. E. Ooh, I see several things going on now. Uh, let's deal with the two. Vertical or horizontal, and how do I know? Vertical. Is it next to the Y where it belongs? No, you say? Then it's not backwards. Vertical expansion by two or compression by a half? Which one? Expansion by two. What about this one-third, vertical or horizontal? Horizontal. Expansion by three, compression by a third. Which one? Expansion by three. So don't write this down, just watch. Remember on the absolute value graph, one of the points was four comma four. It would become an eight and a 12. That's where it would end up. I horizontally expanded it by a factor of 3, and I vertically expanded it by a factor of 2. And I could do that for each point. And if, you have, if they're in nice numbers, you can do it almost in your head just while you're graphing on the fly. If they're yuckier numbers, Amanda, you make a list of the points and you kind of do them this way. But either approach, totally valid, totally fine. This is so much fun. Let's do one more. Okay. In fact, you know what, Itzel, this is my birthday present for you. F. Here you go. Let's see. Uh, vertical or horizontal, and how do you know? Absolutely. 
Is it next to the y where it belongs? Then it's backwards. Expansion by 3 or compression by a third? Absolutely. Happy birthday. I think I said to you last class, and if I didn't already, if you're a little bit confused still, worry but don't panic. I have found, next class, what we're going to be doing is equations that have everything in them. Slides, flips, and stretches. And I've found that actually the tougher equations are much clearer to the kids because now they can see where everything goes at the same time. Oh, that's the flip. Oh, and that's the stretch. Oh, and that's the slide when you see it all in context. So I had a few people come in this morning and a few people in yesterday after school. Don't panic. Trust me, it'll, it'll click. Uh, example three. Okay, now they're giving me the graph. It says the thick line is a stretch of the original thin line. Okay, write an equation. <coughs> Take a look at A. The thin one is the original, and I think the point that's going to be easiest to follow is that kind of vertexy looking point. How high is the original thin vertex? Six? How high is the thick vertex? Three? I think we've undergone a vertical compression by a half. Six became three. I think we've undergone a vertical compression by a half, which means they've replaced y with what? 2y. Everything's backwards in our replacement method. So I don't know if you can see in the typing. Here's my original equation. My new equation would look like this. 2y equals 6 over x squared plus 1. Although, would they leave the 2 there? No. How could we move the 2 over, Cassandra? We divide by 2. Now, watch what happens here. I'm going to get this. y equals, there's going to be a 6 on top. There's going to be an x squared plus 1 on the bottom. And when you're dividing by 2, that's the same as just sticking an extra 2 on the bottom there. Although, do I have a 6 on top? Say yes. Do I have a 2 on the bottom? Say yes. You know what 6 over 2 really is? What on top? A 3. That's what they would write. I wouldn't give you one that tricky to spot. I'll be honest. If you gave me that and then you gave me this, I don't know if I would spot that there has been a compression vertically by a factor of a half. I might. This, absolutely. And from the graph, I can spot it right. B. On your test... I probably won't give you an actual equation like A or an actual equation like C. In fact, I'm going to give you a generic f of x like B, some kind of weird shape with lots of points and curves so you have lots of key points to move around. So B is a question that I like. How has it been moved? How has it been changed? Um, let's deal with any stretches or shrinks first. Let's see. The thin graph is the original. From the top to the bottom, how high is the thin graph originally? Count. Is it six? I don't think so. Five, I think. Yes? Right? Count squares, not lines. Five squares. How tall is the new graph, the thick graph? Count. Here to here. I'm going to guess ten, but is it? Ah, we definitely have had a vertical expansion by two. Uh, see this horizontal line here? How long is it? How many squares horizontally long is that horizontal line originally? Count. Three. 
Here's the same horizontal line, I'm pretty sure. How long is it? How many squares long is the horizontal line, the new one? Have they changed the stretch or shrink horizontally? See how you can kind of look at sections of the graph and figure out what they've done? So nothing horizontal as a stretch. I do think they've done some other stuff, though. Reflections. Which way is this horizontal line pointing originally, to the left or to the right? To the right. Which way is it pointing now? A right became a left. Ah, that's a horizontal reflection. And this curvy shape originally ended up heading downwards. Which way is this curvy shape heading now? Upwards? Oh, you're saying a down became an up? That sounds to me like a vertical reflection. Let's see if we can go straight to the equation without actually listing the replacements. Let's see how good we are. So my original was y equals f of x, a vertical expansion by a factor of 2. What would I replace the y with? You're right, I think. A half y. Yes. Horizontal reflection. What would I replace horizontal x? What would I replace the x with? I gotta be fussy, not a negative. Negative x. Vertical reflection. What would I replace the vertical y? What would I replace the y with? I think I think that's the equation. See how I put that all together? A vertical reflection, a horizontal reflection, and a vertical expansion by a factor of two. Replace y with a half y. Although they would write it this way. They would move the negative and the 2 over to here. That's also a vertical expansion by a factor of 2, a vertical reflection, and a horizontal reflection. C. Hmm. 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 Well, let's look at the heights. I don't think we've had a vertical stretch because it looks like that's this about the same height and that's about the same height right there. I don't think we've stretched it vertically. In my original, I had an uphill and then a downhill. In my new graph, I have an uphill and a downhill. I don't think they flipped it this way at all, or this way at all. You know what I think they've done? I think they've taken that thin graph and done that, stretched it, I think. Let's see if I can convince myself of that. I think that this point is the same as which point on my new graph? Ah! Nothing. You needed it. This point is the same as which point on my new graph? I think this point ended up there. I'm trying to find stuff I can spot easily, so I'm trying to use intercepts. I think that this point ended up there. I think that this point ended up there. I think we've undergone a horizontal expansion or comp expansion. And there's another reason I know that as well. 
Steph, do you see that this point right here remained invariant? The original and the new one both go through there. How far left right is that point? When I stretch zero, what do I get? See, I think this is a horizontal stretch. If it was a vertical stretch, this would have changed heights. A negative 4 became a negative 8. A 2 became a 4. A 6 became a 12. You know what I think this is? I think this is horizontal expansion by 2. Yeah, yeah. Which means replace every single x with what? Half x. So, Carson, see this equation right here? Replace every x with a half x. It's going to look like this. y equals a half x plus 4. A half x minus 2. A half x minus 6. There. That's the new equation. I probably won't give you one like C. I might in the homework, but not on the test. It's a good thinking question, but I find these weird shapes are far easier to figure out what the heck's going on. You've got more corners and key points to move. Hey, let's uh, go to the next page. Over. Example 4 says this. A polynomial function has the equation, instead of f of x, they're going to call it p of x, because uh, p for polynomial instead of f for function. Fair enough. p of x equals, and they've given it to me factored. Lovely. It says, determine the zeros. Hey, what are the zeros of this right now? What are the roots of this right now? What are the roots? So originally, right now, the roots are... 4, yep, yeah. negative 3, and negative 6, yep. Yeah. And what's the y-intercept right now? To find the y-intercept, put a 0 in for x, because if you're on the y-axis, you're 0. So it's going to be 0 minus 4 times 0 plus 3 times 0 plus 6. In fact, it's going to be negative 4 times positive 3 times positive 6. What is negative 4 times positive 3 times positive 6? 72? I think negative 72, is it not? Because it's going to be positive times negative. Oh, never mind. I stand corrected. Yeah, no, negative 4 times positive times positive. You're putting it, putting in zeros in for the x's. Yeah, I'm right. Okay. Are you ready? A. How has this graph been moved? Let's do the three first. Vertical or horizontal, and how do I know? Sorry? Bear with me for one moment. I need to go have a chat with some kitties in the hallway. By the way, another word for roots, let's write this down for a second. Another word for roots is uh, x-intercepts, right? Your roots are your x-intercepts, and we got your y-intercepts. So let's go back and let's answer this question right here. This three, vertical or horizontal, and how do I know? Vertical. Expansion by three, compression by one-third. Which one? Okay, so we have here... A vertical expansion by 3. And then, Jessica, we got a negative. That's a reflection. Vertical or horizontal? How do I know? Okay. Vertical reflection. The question says, find the new zeros and the new y-intercept. Steph, what word is right there? What word is right there? Your x-intercepts won't be changed because you know what x-intercepts are? Horizontal. My x-intercepts are still going to be 4, negative 3, and negative 6. And I don't need to graph it. 
There's no way a vertical can affect an X horizontal. Ah, but you know what my Y intercept is going to be? Expand it by 3. And someone times that by, oh, I can do that in my head. 72 times 3 is going to be 216. Negative 216 reflected. It's going to become y intercept is going to become positive 216. I'm going to get rid of the plus because I never write positive in front of numbers. B. What's going on here? I got a one half. Vertical or horizontal, and how do I know? Horizontal y. Beside the x. Is it you said beside the x? That's backwards. Okay. So that means this is going to be a horizontal expansion by two or compression by a half. Which one? Expansion by two. Comma. I got a negative, vertical or horizontal, and how do I know? Horizontal, why? And uh, horizontal reflection, because negatives are reflections. Carson, what word is that? What word is that? Will that change the y-intercept? Can't. The y-intercept is still going to be negative 72. Ah! But my x-intercepts, which are horizontal, are going to expand by 2 and reflect. Expand by 2 and reflect. Nicole, what's this one going to end up as? Expand by 2 and reflect. Yes. You back here? I don't think you were quite, you were elsewhere, it looked like to me. I know. Sabrina, expand by two and reflect. So expand it by two. Times it by two. I think you're right. And then reflect it. Instead of negative six. I think you're right, but I'm reading your lips. I need a bit more. Yes, there you go. Be positive on positive six. So let's be. Okay. Roxanne, expand by two and reflect. So negative 12, expand by 2, reflect positive 12. Okay. Expansions, compressions. So I gave you some homework from the last day on expansions, compressions. A few more. Oh, no yawning yet. Number one, practicing writing equations. Uh... Sure. Number two. So here all you're going to say is, well, let's do 2A. Look at 2A. Horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. Expansion by three, compression by a third. So horizontal, X3. Uh, 3A and 3B. Three 3A three and 3B. Three and how about G? Uh, I'll go 4A and 4B. And number 6. 